Well, hello, Accounting 582 Cyber students. This is our guidance for our capstone. Time has flown. So, we have the introduction. I talk about uh, the uh, a serious problem of Turner theft. Um, I have some PowerPoint slides posted in our um, capstone project folder. You can uh, have a look through these. This is a, a talk that I give when I do talk about Turner fraud. And I analyze uh, District of Columbia data. And I find at the end that uh, none of the agencies have a very high uh, toner expense, suggesting that they uh, at least don't have a major toner fraud problem. So you can look through the PowerPoints yourself. We have our data and we have our requirements. So uh, the first one is the data profile. So we can go over here. Uh, this is our purchasing car data. I'm going to take the amount and I'm going to copy it to the Negrini cycle template, send it over here, paste. Uh, I have my data here. This is just so that we get uh, the exact integer, integer amount and that there's no rounding error due to, to floating point arithmetic. Oops, lost that there. All the way down, let's see that the formulas do go all the way down. I'm going to do home and home, and indeed it goes to 13,294. So, my first requirement is the data profile, and I'm almost done over here. If I click on data profile, I see the data profile, but it only copies to D26. I really needed to go to D13,294. So, let's see whether this would work. Um, you can try it. I'm going to hope it's going to work. Um, it's dollar D, dollar 26. We can do home, replace, replace, dollar D, dollar 26. And you know, I might as well go all the way to dollar D, dollar 1 million. Um, I can go to 100,000. I know I have less than 100,000 rows. It will look in all the rows, and when the rows are blank, it'll just ignore it. So let's see how many replacements I think I need. I think I need over here about 16, I suppose. Replace all. 27 replacements. It's up to you. Just check uh, that everything here looks fine, except I need to make one more adjustment. Let's go here. Um, the high value amounts, row 18, are 5,000 and higher. So we need to make sure we're doing that. And when I go here, 5,000 and higher. Yes, it is actually 5,000 and higher. This is different to greater than or equal to 5. This is different to the data profile in the book. And indeed, that's my data profile done. I can do a uh, print screen copy. I want a bit neater than this, but uh, you get the idea. Copy, and we'll go here. Document one, part one, requirement one, and you're going to give me a data profile over there. Um, let's see what number two is. That's our number two. Sorry, I don't mean to make you dizzy. Uh, periodic graph based on the amount field. And uh, you can read it yourself. Uh, our data starts in October and runs through September. I need the totals per month. And I can't, it won't help me. Here we go. I need the total per month, but in fact, I need it to go from October to September. So let me try a little trick here. I'm going to do here, month, and this we're going to call one word year, month. And watch what we're going to do. We're going to extract the year out of the date by going equals year, Y-E-A-R. My date is over there. And I'm going to do month, month there. And now I'm going to combine the two. 
so that I get a 2013 one, and I'm going to combine the two with concatenate equal concatenate. Concatenate this followed by a little hyphen. Um, quotes minus sign quotes and followed by the month which is in K2. Look what I get. 2013-01. Copy this down to the bottom plus sign swift left and double click and I need to go check that it did copy all the way to the bottom which was 13294. I'm doing home end home. Yes 13294 control home. Now I need the total per month, and at least I have a year as well, so that uh, it'll be in the right order. Let's go. Insert, pivot table, and depending on the version of Excel, uh, these commands might um, be slightly different. It's got the right range. Okay. And I want here month as my rows, and I want the amount summed. Wonderful. Look there. 2012-10 to 2013-9. Here are my sum of amounts. I'm going to do copy. We'll go here to the periodic graph. Paste. And this graph is pretty good, except that I go 1 through 12 instead of 2012-10 to 2013-09. Um, so I need to sort of make an adjustment over here. Um, let me go back and copy these. Copy. Um, here we go. I'm just going to put it here. There we go. I have the right months over here. And now. This is context sensitive, so be clicking the right thing. I know I've, I'm sort of clicking in here. Uh, select data, and over here, axis labels edit. I'm going to point to that. We'll do OK, OK, and I have correctly labeled. Correct totals, and you know, please change this. This looks like a rainbow here. Um, format the data series, and uh, I'm not sure why I did it with those colors. Make it one color or something, uh, black and white or blue or something like that. And here we go, document two. The next thing I need to do is my periodic graph with a heading. And the next one should be quick too. Um, we'll go back here. First two digit tests on amounts greater than or equal to 10. The good news is that when I go back here to the Negrini cycle, first two, if D2 greater than or equal to 10, so it is only looking at greater than or equal to 10. You see here you can see it puts a minus one. And all those that have the minus one, it simply ignores in the calculations. So it's got the first two digits here, except over here, it is not counting all the rows. It's only counting up to D26. So let me change this to 100,000. My data set is less than 100,000, but it'll, it'll ignore the blanks. Um, plus sign, double click. Bingo! That's looking pretty good, and that is indeed a first two digit graph. We're on a roll. Did you expect it to conform to Benford's law? The short answer is yes. Accounting data generally does follow Benford's law. Uh, one small exception is that there is usually is a maximum of 2,500 per car transaction, and that might upset the digit patterns a little bit. What conclu conclusion can you draw with? Use the calculated MAD. 
So we go back here. The calculated mean absolute deviation is in tables. I even highlighted it for you. And you need to go to the table in the book and see whether that is conformity, uh, non-conformity. I forget exactly what the, um, what the descriptions were. Uh, close conformity, um, and so on. So you can see what conclusion you can draw. Um, let me go just back to the actual first two. I mean, you can you can see what this is going to be. It's probably not going to be close. And it, I leave it up to you. So you know, with this little mess over here and all those gaps over there, unlikely to be close conformity. Number duplication test, but here we have rank and we have first two. So we have a little bit of work cut out here. This is the purchasing card data. Number duplication test. Just make sure the cursor is so somewhere in here would be okay. And we'll go insert, pivot table, okay. And now the row is amount, and I want to count, not sum. See, in default it goes to sum, so we need to do a little change here. Value field settings, count. Now I have the count, but I'm still not too thrilled here. I need to sort this largest to smallest. And now I do have this. Let me see. Fifth, the first 15 rows. And I want rank, count, amount, first two. So I'm going to go here. Rank, count, amount, is two. Well, bold. I can get the count right from here. So I'm going to go equals B4. And I need to go down 15, which should give me, get me to row 18, I think. I'll leave it up to you. If this is wrong, you fix it. Uh, the amount is in A4, is in A. So equals A4 copy it down and now we'll go here for rank what I really want is if the two counts are the same I wanted to give it have the same rank so I'm going to use Excel's rank function equal rank rank of what rank of count and the whole range is dollar e Dollar four two dollar e dollar eighteen and there we go. This is the largest count. Uh, I can copy it down because those dollar e dollar four will be good. And I have no the same here if i actually change this to 53 i'm just this is wrong but we change it to 53 you can see we get an 11 for both of them uh, which is nice we put a 54 back where it was and that was equal b14 there we go the first two digits intuitively i would like to go equal left of amount comma two but this is going to be a little bit problematic because over here, the first two characters are three dot. And over here, seven dot. So we're going to fix that by going multiplying by 1,000 and then even a penny. 0 0.01 will have first two digits, one zero. And almost done. I've solved this problem, but I have it... Uh, uh, um, left justified and that means it thinks it's text so we are going to change this to value and then it should move to right equal value which means it now sees it as a 14 value close the parentheses and i need to copy this down there we go and now i have my pretty table it looks a lot like 
that. And so we can go here and we'll do number duplication. Number duplication. Almost done. The 10 employees that purchased the most toner and ink. This is going to be a little tricky, but I think we can do it. We go here, back to the data, and over here, no, I'm going to put a filter in, and I'm going to look for the words toner or ink anywhere in the description, just like toner or ink anywhere in the description. So we go back here, description, home, sort and filter, filter. And now I want a text filter contains, contains toner, watch I'm clicking here, or contains ink. Okay. And here I have toner ink. Now, what I want to do is I want the employees, and you just have the first four letters of the employee's name. Uh, I just chopped off all the letters past four. Ah, that was my T. Um, and so now I want the total for toner or ink here. The funny thing is if I actually do a, a um, pivot table now, it is going to pivot the entire data set and not just what I see. And what I see is the filter. So I'm going to go in here and do a little bit more magic. I'm going to do toner indic for toner indicator. And I'm just going to put a one in each of these rows because it is indeed toner or ink. Copy it down to the end. It did copy all the way down to the end. Uh, this is row 13276. I thought we went to 13274. Doesn't matter. Um, 374. So I have a one wherever it is, toner or ink over there. Now I'm going to undo my filter, clear filter. And now I have ones where it is, toner or ink, blanks otherwise. So watch this little trick here. I'm going to go and I think I'm gonna go and remove all these filters here. There we go. Now we're gonna do a pivot table to get the total per person, and then we are going to tell it, but only toner or ink. Insert, pivot table, it's got a whole range. Name, this is funny that it, I'm going to cancel out of here. No, 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 don't do this to me. Control Z. Control Z. I don't want to work with this. I really... That was strange. I've had that before. It doesn't give me a new sheet like I get over here or over here. It seems to want to work in the old sheet. And my cursor was here, so it wanted to actually start working over here and overwrite some of this. But I actually need this. I'm going to put the cursor he, here and see if I can do insert pivot table and it's outside the range. So I need to go in here, insert pivot table, OK, and I did get a new sheet. So this is Excel at its best. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do, but you do actually either want the sheet or you want it to be outside of that data range. And we're going to pull name down here. 
we're going to pull amount down here. And now I get the sum of amount, but I don't want the sum of amount. I want the sum of amount where the toner index equals 1. And so I have a filter over here, and I'm going to pull toner index down here. And just pulling it there doesn't mean anything because it's got all over there. I don't want all. I want the cases where toner indicator equals 1. And I do that. I could have done it here, I think. No. Hey, it worked over here. I'm leaving it at 1. Now, I can go sum of amount, sort, largest to smallest, and indeed, I can do a little table with, uh, this is, must be Kimberly. Um, actually, I think these are the last four. Uh, of the last name. So we're going to need name over here, amount here, and not formatted like this. I want nice dollar signs, and I want the 10 employees. Almost done. Wrong one. Identify one seller that has the attributes that would be present in an employee or an accomplice stealing toner. We can go to eBay, and this is actually quite amazing. Watch. When I look for toner cartridges, there are 346,000 listings. This is quite amazing. Why all these listings for toner cartridges? Now, when people really, when businesses want to buy toner, they don't go to eBay. Well, I'm going to go to auction. And I'm going to go number of bids over here. And I'm not sure how you're going to find your seller, but I have a little blurb over here as to what I'm looking for. And what you want is somebody that looks like an eBay, uh, potential eBay thief, um, eBay thief, toner thief. And what I've had people do before is they'll go onto this page and give me the first person that they look at, and that takes two minutes, and that'll get zero points. So um, spend some time, go through them, have a look, and here is what might be called the model answer from a few years ago. Here we go. Ta -dum. I selected two, but you only need to select one. Included the screenshots. These are the two sellers. Uh, and in fact, you can't use these two if you find them. Uh, they've already been identified. That met the criteria. Uh, due to the following criteria, they set them out nicely. And they give me a nice little blurb and a nice little write-up. Um, neither has a long history. Here's a picture of one of the items. Both sellers, both listings only provide... So, uh, I'll, you can pause this and read it. I'm not going to pause. You can pause. Again, you can um, pause this and read it. And this is probably what I would call, a, not probably, this is what I call a model answer. And I'm looking forward to 14 answers like this from you. Well, that's nice. This is... Uh, all the way done onto here. Part two. So let's close everything that I don't need open anymore. I don't need to save. You might need to save it. Um, don't save. And we can not save this. Remember, change the color of those bars. Um, okay. Open access, create a database. You've done this before. And you've done this before for two of our previous cases. I think the cases were numbered two and four. Here is two. Open access. Da -da -da. We've actually done this before. So here's my database. Here's the table. You should have a table like this. Uh, query connections per day. I'm just running it. Here it is. And this is what you did. You gave me date ascending. Now, I'm asking you to redo this. Not that, not that, not that. I'm just going to close this now, since you've seen we've been there. Um, 
Now, identify the two days with the highest number of connections. So, uh, it's not date ascending. It is sum descending. Group by date, sum the connections, and sort descending. And this is the same data as what you had, and I don't think you, you might have seen this. I so I sort of saved this to last. Here it is. Two dates with massive numbers of connections. And I ask you to identify the two dates, prepare a small table, write a short narrative, consider the date with the third highest connection count, which is this one over here, and I ask you to give that some thought over there. Uh, you should be good to go with this. Um, this is a present from me to you. It's not quite Christmas. Call it uh, Memorial Day or Easter or whatever is coming up. Now, it's just my present to you. I know that you've read this before. And I've uh, given this to you again for one simple reason. Here we go here. This is accounting 582. This is our course schedule. And here it says, reading lessons from an $8 million fraud. I suppose you've read it before. But since it's here, I thought we'll include it in the capstone. Uh, it's about 25% of your grade. You can sort of call that uh, in the bag or whatever time you want, uh, term you want to use. So, I think this is our last video. And so from me to you, I've enjoyed our class. And um, coming up for 27 minutes, it's then bye-bye.